Good evening, guys. Rebel Creative here. I wanted to introduce you guys to a very good friend of mine who is a chef, and he's going to help me learn to advance my skills. This is Chef Sean. Hello there. So tonight we are going to make two semi-different dishes. Again, he is more advanced than I am, and I asked him out of his kind heart to help me advance myself, and he agreed. Well, one of the dishes we are making is rabbit stew. Second one, I forget. He can explain. Uh, essentially, it's um, it's gonna be a a shrimp and pasta dish with uh white wine, uh, red onion in place of shallots because we just don't have any. Um, so linguine, uh, arugula, basil, parsley, and baby spinach. Thank you very much. Absolutely. So we are gonna go step by step with this again. He is more advanced than I am. He is the chef. He is a great cook. I have had his food before, and I am still learning, because if you guys seen from my other videos, I am not an expert, but I wanted to learn. So, let's give it a try. He is going to be instructing me as we go, so enjoy. Thank you. Right. So, first bit, <clears throat> we're going to cut down one of each of these carrots, because uh, we're, okay. be, we're going to be stuffing the rabbit, sure. specifically... Um, with rosemary, thyme, sage, uh, a bunch of things that once we start searing the actual rabbit, it's going yeah. to impart flavor into the meat. Sure. So we'll uh, start... Give me one second, Chef. Let me just adjust this so our viewers can watch. Yeah, come on over here. I just adjusted the view, guys. I want you guys to watch this as it's happening. Again, he shut. I'm new. Right. So... So I'm not even going to skin these because I've already rinsed them. And uh, they're going to get cooked down, and a lot of the nutrients and everything you're going to get is actually once you wash the dirt and everything off, is going to come from the skin. Okay. Fancier places will cut the skin off because everybody expects it. Once you rinse them, it's not entirely necessary. Okay. So I'm going to give you this tiny little one for the beginning. Sure. And how should I cut these? So, <clears throat> because these are going into the rabbit, yeah. uh, the first thing you're going to do is long ways. Okay. I'm going to cut it in half. Watching your hands just so I don't So, yeah, injured. don't cut yourself. Yeah. That's why he's teaching me, y'all. Perfect. All right. So, and again, in half. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. And then, Is that one should have been better? That's nah, fine. Okay. Uh, like I said, it's going into the rabbit. We're going to see the rabbit. We're going to put the stock on top of the rabbit, let it simmer. All this is going to get cooked down and taken out. Okay. These are not something that's going to be in the finished product. That's okay. why we have the other ones in the sure. And then, I'm just going to chop them. So I'm not that good if you guys can see it. To me, that's impressive. I'm still learning. It takes time. Eventually you learn. Uh, specifically, if you want to, you see how my fingers are? Yeah. See the, we call it the spider, right? See, so, like a spider. Yeah. But that way, if you look at what I'm doing it, I know I'm left-handed, which makes it difficult for the camera even for you to see, but because my fingers are here and my, my yeah. nails, everything is tucked in, what I've got is, if you look... Well, don't mind me. Let me grab the camera so you can yeah, actually put it right here. I'm going to hold the camera, you guys, just for a moment. So hey, you can rest just, it right there. Well, I just want to hold it on a good angle. All right, so the blade is resting specifically on my middle knuckle, yeah. and everything is tucked in. So I can do this, and I don't even have to look. Yeah. I just know exactly where the blade is, and I know I'm not going to get cut. Yeah. So you can do that. I know this is a bigger blade, so but you can do it with that one, too. It's it's a simple matter of... i slide this on the back. Sure. This half, so it's easier. Okay. I did this for you guys, all the so, viewers, so you guys know exactly what you are doing. Again, so again, the spider, everything is tucked in, so you don't cut anything. And then the blade is resting on that middle knuckle, which is a little bit forward. And then you can just go through as long as you make sure to keep on pushing back and keep everything tucked in. I'm not even looking. Proper knife skills are always important, the way you don't hurt yourself, and you're not feeding anybody your own blood, which is always a good thing. Yes. <laughs> Once again, 
He's the chef, not me. I'm not as advanced as us. All right. All right. So let's see. Let's see you try. Sure. Yeah. One second, guys. He's having me test my skills. Not an issue for me. Well, somewhat. I have no problem trying something out. <clears throat> Alright, so you're gonna take the first guy in your right hand. So, yes. already, turn your hand. Hold okay. we'll Let's take this away. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, and let's not drop it. So you see how my hand is like this? Yep, like that. So you're gonna okay. hold this like that. Middle finger on the product, okay. but still with it tucked in. Okay. Yep, and then you're gonna keep the knife with that. So okay. when you're cutting, it's gonna feel like this. Okay. And make sure see, see that the first time, yeah. see that that's that's no good. Yeah. You want it like that because that way, no matter how much you do this, okay. you're never going to cut your fingers. Okay. Always be aware of where your fingertips are. So okay. you're going to start from up here. Yeah. I know that I'm going to get this on brush. I can guarantee that. That's all right. Slow is fine. So now you're going to get to here. You want to you want to know your knife is up against here. Okay. And you don't ever like so the knife is gonna gonna put down. Okay. You're good. No, no, no. Keep your keep your hand on exactly. where it is. I'm so, no, you're good. So now you feel. Yeah. If you're gonna feel the knife, this is up against. Yeah. And you keep on going because you're never gonna cut your finger as long as it's tucked in. Yeah. As long as you keep the knife up against and the blade never comes up, you're never gonna cut your skin. It's literally this. Yes. So you just. Just oh, wa wash that finger again. Yeah. Everything always tucked in. Like a tiger claw. If that yeah. makes it any easier. Yeah. I just know for me. Watch it's... your fingers. Yeah. See? I, I told you. I watch your fingers. I didn't tell myself no chef. Which I'm very grateful for. Always in. This. Yeah. Even if you have to do it like this until you get used to it. This yeah. is is good. Tiger claw. Yes. Or, like I said, spider. Yeah. So, all right. But I did not cut myself with no cut. That's great. I, I'm not into cannibalism tonight. <laughs> I definitely need to eat your skin, thank you. Chef is for real, but you guys have got character and funny. And, it's, and my apologies for any cursing that may happen. I can't help myself. Um, but he is helping I me learn. Look at them, you're, already yes. doing, you're already not doing it. You're already like... He's already yelling at me, y'all. You already stopped. <laughs> okay, <no. laughs> okay, Chef, you're allowed to yell at me. I'm just, dude. <laughs> yeah, but you can still yell at me because I'm still in practice. <laughs> well, that's I'm that's why I'm gonna yell at you because you know how many times I've cut myself because I was being stupid. <laughs> fingers in, fingers in. Hey, I am not that bad. I didn't say you were stupid. I said I'm stupid. Fingers in. <laughs> no, I just chose to say I am not that bad. I didn't say you were. I just you know. Keep on putting your fingers out. You're gonna cut them off. <laughs> this isn't stubby chef <laughs> channel. This is, you know, we're not cooking. Not cooking with numbs. I can't help that. We're not cooking. We're not. This isn't cooking with numbs. You don't want to cut your fingertips off. That's bad. That's that's like rule number one. <laughs> don't mind me. You're gonna. Have, I'm sure. I'd, ra gonna I'd rather. I'd rather the food works. taste bad. And you, re you you retain all your digits. <laughs> It's probably a better thing. Although, lovely work. Just Thank don't, you. you know, don't cut your fingers off. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm pretty sure once a few of you guys watch this, you're going to be laughing at my crazy ass, and it don't bother me, because I'm the one learning. And if you are, you guys, I know out there who can cook, you are not this advanced. I'm not trying to sound like a bitch shouting me out, but I'm I being honest. Don't alienate your audience. I'm not an alienating. <laughs> no, the one will know who I'm talking about. Gotcha. Also, um, the way you're holding the knife. Yes. You see the way I hold the knife? This. So, <clears throat> you keep moving it up. Finger here. Thumb here, above the handle. This is going to give you more control. Okay. It's going to give you a better... Ability to control. This isn't going to give you nearly as much. You want to choke up on the bat. Okay. Like baseball. Okay. Choke up on the bat. It gives you more control that way. And use closer to your fingers so you know where the blade is. So you're going to use use this side of the blade, like this this area. Okay. With this instead. Okay. Don't cut from the tip. Cut from the... Yeah. 
better, better. Thank you. And that will give you more control, and because you have the spatial awareness naturally of where your fingers are in your head, like when you close your eyes, and I tell you to touch your nose, and you can do it. Yeah. If you, you have spatial awareness of where your hands are, so if everything is choked up and your fingers are all here, in the back of your head, your body actually knows where your fingers are, which okay. is, again, less likely to make you nubby. Yes. That was a good thing. So I'm glad I just learned something new from Chef. So we'll slide those over. And, by the way, guys, just in case, because <clears throat> this is only part one, I know we will take a break in between. This is prep video for this part, but I'm learning prepping. I'm also learning to cook two different dishes. Sorry, guys, about the view. I don't so, mind it. So, so understandably, um, so what we're doing is we are prepping vegetables because we are going to stuff the carcass of the rabbit um, to, once we sear it and saute, we're going to get sage, thyme, rosemary, all kind of infusing the meat before we even add water or stock. Don't mind me. I am... Oh, yeah, fix it. That's great. Nobody can see my sweatpants now. Um, That's not even that. You can show pants worth showing. So... But he's going to put that in front of you guys because I still need practice, obviously. Oh, you don't want to do this. We've got two. Well, I can still help. I don't mind. Right, so... But I knew you were cutting that far. That's why I said that. So, I don't again... We're going to cut in half. Yeah, you can cut that in a bit off. It helps you. That's not a problem. Yes, my SUD. Can I continue? That's fine. Okay. Like I said, I'm going to slice it long ways in half. Okay. All right. And then again, with the tiger claw of the spider, keeping everything close up, choke up on the knife, and just, again... Take your time. Yeah. There's no no hurry with it. Again, like what I told you. Yeah. Choke up on the knife. Like this? Mm hmm And use closer to your fingers. Mm hmm Good. You're good. You're doing great. Thank you. Mm hmm I'm going to honestly say, you guys, because the fact he's teaching me in the advance, it's helping me learn more, and I'm enjoying this because I enjoy cooking. Everything takes time and patience. If you guys are sure that he just said everything takes time and patience, which I completely agree with, especially when it comes to good food. I've seen certain shows and no new. And if Chef was in this room right now, he would have yelled at me for what almost just happened. But I'm not hurt. Did you cut yourself? No. Okay. Again. No. Next is onions. What no, you... my fingers weren't like that the moment like that. That's yes. why I do <laughs> Again, it's, it's, it's muscle memory. It it's real. muscle memory. It's time. And just continuously doing it, eventually you just do it automatically. But you're learning, so it takes time. Yes. How are you at dicing onions? I am not the greatest at it, I will admit. Okay. So, we're going to do... I'm going to show you the Hold first half. Hold on. Let me grab this so they can watch. And then I will help learn. So, I'll show you the first half. Now, for this, I'm going to... And yes, our hands are clean, guys. We severely washed, considering I'm it's still the midst of COVID. Forgo the cleaver and pull out my nakiri knife. Uh, nakiri is a Japanese um, vegetable cleaver, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to a nigiri knife, which is a Japanese sushi cleaver. Fun facts, small differences. So, start pulling it that way. So you've got the two slices, both ways, also working with the grain of the onion, which means you're going to make sure that everything is kind of equal out as humanly as possible. And then we're going with small because we're stuffing the rabbit with this, so... I mean, there's a difference between small, medium, and large, depending on the dice. And I got the last one here. And we've got diced onion. 
So we're going to go slow with you. Yes. So you can see everything. I'm actually going to have you use this one because it's okay. probably going to be slightly easier. I, guess I am fingers. putting this okay. down so that way I can get my practice in. Okay, I'm going to angle it a certain way. Alright, so first thing you want to do, okay. and you're doing it the opposite way. So yeah, I'm right handed. So you're going to you're gonna hold it like this, and making sure not to go that far down, because first you're going to go sideways. So you're going to, if you want, even I'll hold it, or you can put your hands on top of mine, or I'll put my hands on top of yours, so you know exactly what you can do. But now, carefully, with not a lot of pressure, because you don't need a lot with this. You want to get it to, like, there. You want to have, like, a little bit left on the onion. So carefully, and yes, do a sawing motion, but like very gently, because you don't need a whole lot. <laughs> I'm struggling with it, as you can tell, Chef. Right, perfect. Oh, you went too far. Okay? Yeah, I'm good. Nothing? No cut. <laughs> went too far. All right. It's understandable. Yeah. Um, it's, I will get it. And, and honestly, there's really not that much pressure involved. Uh, I think maybe we were pushing too hard down on the onion. Okay. So well, on the beginning. Right. So I'll take care of this one. Okay. And what you're gonna do here is you're going to just like we did the um the tiger claw. Yeah. You're just going to cut like that. So okay. it's gonna be the opposite side for you. So you're gonna start from this side, tiger claw, and just cut not all the way through. Let's see where all my cuts stop. Yeah. About a quarter inch. Yeah. So you're gonna put this here. You're gonna hold the onion. That's it. Okay. All the way to finish up my cuts. Okay. Uh, so you did it the whole way, that's okay. <laughs> Literally just said, don't do the whole way, but that's all right. This is, this is, we can still do this and we can make it work. Yeah. I'm still learning, so. It's, it's all right. I'm not, no, not that. I saw it. Yeah. Patience, that's all it is. Yeah. All right, so since you cut all the way through, what we're going to do now is we're going to gather them all up together. Okay, so that's what I'm And doubled. then you're just okay. going to, you're just going, you didn't fail. It's oh, just, it's, <laughs> this is also, see, yeah, once you start doing it this way, you get a whole lot more, um, a yeah. whole lot more of a sulfur release from the onion. So you're going to stop crying. I'm not crying yet. I just I'm not to... crying. You're crying. <laughs> so now you're going to carefully chop these. But you're going to go the other way, obviously. You're going to go this way. Yeah. Because it hands. I was going to say, that's fine. Do it that way. You're good. This is fun. The fun part about cooking versus baking is a lot of oopsies and mistakes can be fixed. Yes. Actually, a lot more simply. Baking, you put too much salt, too much flour, too much anything in, your blueberry muffins are just bollocks. However, cooking, if it's too salty, you add citrus. If it's too much one thing, usually there's a counteraction you can add another, because it's... And Chef, how may I ask how these turn out? Not bad. Okay. Not bad at all. I mean, you know, it's alright though. Like I said, these are going to yeah, get yeah. stuffed in the rabbit and they're going to get cooked down. Yeah. So... I just want to make sure Chef... No, off. you're good. You are absolutely fine. <laughs> Do we have to prep anything else, Chef? Uh, yes. Yes, we okay. actually have... Is that going to be prepped up in there? We've got a multitude of herbs. We've got, okay. like I said, sage, rosemary, and thyme. As opposed to parsley. Sage, okay. rosemary, and thyme. Because, you know, the song. <laughs> He's grabbing on this. That way you guys can take a peek at what it looks like. Rosemary, sage... So the time is small enough, and because, like I said, it's just getting stuffed in. Yeah. We don't even have to really cut this down. Okay. We don't really have to if cut it. If you want to hold it up to the camera, that way they could see. Oh, right. It's not sure. a razor cut. So, um, or a chef, obviously. This is actually this is fresh thyme. Um, it's got small little leaves on it. Um, uh, you, usually you buy, you know, any any produce section of most stores has it, unless you're shop right. And then they just run out of stuff for no reason. Which is why I don't go there for herbs. And times with the COVID. Oh no, it's just all the time. Even before COVID happened, they oh, still wow. run out of stuff all the time. ShopRite sucks. 
Uh, and then we got rosemary, which uh, it's honestly this is one of my favorite herbs because when I cut it, uh, your hands just smell like it all the time, and it's just really you know smell out there. It's got like a lemony, citrusy, yeah. very very nice with a lot of savory dishes. And then sage, which I feel like is very underused. Um, certain people will prick up uh, because sage. Talk about um, burning sage to expel, you know, bad vibes or whatever from from a room or a house. Also, the fact that sage is very much used also in and sage also is used in um, churches and things like that for that same reason. So the smell is very similar. Mm -hmm. uh, the flavor is also going to be the thing. This scent very similar. Uh, fun fact about sage: and when you look at it, you can actually see the leaves are very velvety. Yeah, feel them, feel it. it's, it's actually it feels like velvet. Yeah, they're so we've got fresh sage. We are going to take just a couple of leaves around. I'm going to chop them again because we're stuffing the rabbit with this, so it's yeah. not necessary. But sage is also very strong. Um. Fresh is always going to be weaker than dry. Remember that. So if you are using fresh herbs and the recipe calls for dry or mentions it, you're probably going to have to use almost double the amount because the dried ones, all the oils and everything else has been condensed because of the process of drying them out. So when it comes to using fresh, you're probably going to need just a little bit more. Just a rule of thumb to think about. Take these guys. That's probably good for the first rabbit. And I did get two rabbits. Uh, it's in my experience with this recipe that you're going to get somewhere between three quarters to a gallon of stew per rabbit. Mostly because of the fact that we're going to be using a roux to thicken the stew because stew isn't stew unless it's thick. People will, will, everybody has their own opinion of what they like about stew. I don't think stew is stew unless you can take it and spread it on bread. But that's, again, that's just a matter of each chef's opinion. So, that should be good for, for me. This is just my first time making stew. Last time I had stew was like a beef stew. That was when I was a kid. Otherwise, it was the canned stew, which. If I had to compare from when I liked both, I'd have to say it was the homemade version. So, alright. Well, canned anything tends to be not nearly as nice. That's I, on the I remember mainly the taste of the homemade, and even though I don't eat cow meat anymore because of health and digestive reasons, the canned, if I had, if I can remember a bit of it, it just tasted to me. So often that was before I had to stop eating cow meat because not just the health but my digestive system. So the last two things we're going to stuff in the and he these rabbits. Up for us, so. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> You're good. The last I two things we're going to stuff in this rabbits, as far as aromatics go, um, is going to be these lovely. Okay, you're cutting them. I am not. <laughs> these lovely Chinese shiitake mushrooms that I got from the local Asian market. Uh, lots of umami, lots of flavor, a lot better than white mushrooms. I'm having him do this because I don't like mushrooms. But if I had to make do this for a video, at least I'm learning from him. So we're not going to finely chop the garlic because it's not necessary. Again, it's all just going in the rabbit. I'm just going to rough chop the garlic just very simply. Just enough that I can separate it between the two. And again, I don't want to use a lot of the mushroom because I'm saving the rest of it to make sure we have enough to give a dimension of umami flavor to the stock. So, plus these rabbits are not that big. They're not going to fit all of this. So we know we definitely have these bits and then we're going to use what we can of the other bits. So, all right. I'm not trying to sound like a wimpy guys, but I am not a fan of mushrooms. Like we, he, I can tell he also did that so I could avoid eating them, which I'm grateful for. But for me, taste and texture with mushrooms, heck no. I never liked them. So the fun thing about a stew, and especially a stew like this where all these flavors are kind of coming together, is that chances are you're not going to be able to pinpoint the actual flavor of the mushrooms. and 
Like I said, I will. I, know. I will strain the mushrooms out once I get the stock done before I put the roux in to thicken it. That way, you don't have to deal with mushrooms. No, no, just, I just choose to be for real. I'll save them <laughs> so the rest of us people can can eat them. Yes. <laughs> All right, so if you want to turn the camera here. Okay. So, I mean, rabbit is a very, very delicate meat. Um, it kind of is almost like gamey chicken is the best way to put it. And I don't mean gamey in a bad way. I mean, like, actually has an added dimension of flavor. So I got these rabbits from the local Asian market. They're frozen, so I thawed them. So... That's the rabbit will be hopping along, you know, he got his arms and his legs. Sorry if this looks gross, you guys, but I chose to keep this for real, so. So, they've already taken all the insides out of the rabbit. That's where the head would have been. We're going to stuff this body cavity like you would a turkey on Thanksgiving. So, let me get both and these rabbits out. I can guarantee for myself, everybody, I have never eaten this before. I can't think of any time I ever have. And because it's not considered with my dietary restrictions, I chose to give it a try. It's, rabbit is, is like I said, it, it, it is a little gamey, but it's also fairly delicate. And honestly, if you cooked a bunch of rabbit and chicken stock, you won't be able to tell, generally tell the difference. Except for maybe, oh, this chicken is slightly chewy. You can just smile to yourself. Although, nobody should ever feed somebody an animal they might not always eat unless you tell them. Because that's just... Well, then you can make them sick. Wrong. You can make them <laughs> sick, too. I've, I've had that happen to me. I had someone hand me a food with cow meat in it, and I kept getting sick. Yeah, well, no, you... Honestly. You just make sure that... Let them know what they're eating, of course. No, the person decided to test me and see if I can eat something. Alright, <clears throat> so, I do have, obviously, two separate cutting boards. As you can see, this cutting board is specifically for the raw meat, uh, so we're not going to cross-contaminate anything, and the big wooden one is for all the vegetables and everything else. So, I'll And he's start. more experienced, so I'm just holding this for now, but I'm still learning in the process, which I'm enjoying. We're going to start with the herbs and the garlic. Like I said, we're going to spread them out, stuff them into the actual body cavity up here where the chest was, and make sure they all end up down here as well. Just make sure it's all completely spread out. Um, so you can see it's all, it's everywhere. It's it's not just any one thing, that way, like, the meat is... And we are also not trying to offend anybody, animal mm -hmm. lovers, anything like that. This is something I chose to do because I wanted to learn something new, so if... You're going to take offense. Don't watch the channel. That's... Well, no that, way. No, you're good. I understand. There's no way you're going to learn. Yeah. You know, if you didn't want rabbits to, you would have probably turned it off initially. Yeah. Uh, everybody else who's interested, like I said, you can get this at most local Asian markets. It will be frozen. You're going to have to thaw it. Best way to thaw anything is in the fridge overnight or wrapped up in a Ziploc bag, and then put in a pot or something else on continuous cold running water, because that way there's no worry of bacteria or anything else. Same way that restaurants thaw chicken or anything else they do. So, <clears throat> sorry, I don't want to. I don't yeah. want to handle all the bits that we may be putting in the stock later. If I'm also so handling the meat, so there's going to be a lot of just like me. We're both continue. Hand washing. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of hand washing in between. Alright, so we got carrots, onions, celery. Like I said, rabbits are not very big, so it's a very small amount of each per rabbit. Make sure to stuff it all the way in there, make sure all the bits are covered. Now, you could, if you really wanted to, like if you were doing this, uh, like with fresh, a fresh rabbit carcass, like if you hunted it or you bought it from a farmer's market, uh, and you wanted to just do, like just rabbit by itself and it wasn't in a stew or a soup or something like that, I could understand wanting to tie it up to keep all those lovely aromatics inside. 
but considering after the fact we're just going to be putting stock and, and water and seasoning on top of it to let it kind of cook down and simmer to pull all the meat off the bones, there's no reason to tie this up, because even if it falls out, it's going to end up falling out anyway, and it's not going to make a difference. A small handful of each bit. And again... Oh I'm finding this curious as I watch, even though I'm controlling the camera, but still, it's awesome to learn. Absolutely. So now Considering we've done, I've never made a Thanksgiving turkey. And it's very similar to stuffing a turkey, except the body cavity for the chest is very, very small, and the rest yeah. of it, like I said, that's why some people might want to tie it up. But given what we're doing with it, yeah. not necessary. And we've got this lovely stock pot. Uh, I believe this is a 24 quart stock pot. So, Just making sure the angle is get good. This going. Put, what is the temperature for that? Uh, well, you're just gonna put it on high for the most part, because like I said, you're trying to sear this. And that's olive oil, or? Uh, this is olive oil. I'm also gonna put a small bit of butter in there. I'm gonna okay. season the outside of these with white pepper, salt, uh, a little bit of garlic. Okay. And we're going to. What you're hearing right now is actually the water that was still in there interacting with the oil that's heating up. Um, this, is the pot, this is the pot I happen to use to thaw out the rabbit, which is, you know, still got water in it, so. Now, I'm going to use pink Himalayan salt. Just because I want to be super fancy pants. Uh, <laughs> and also the fact that there are, um, there's a lot more nutrients and, and minerals and things like that in there that's going to help. Put that down to a little bit more of a medium heat. Yeah, it just was the sound for now. Okay. So, that smells good though. That's just the butter and oil. It's not no, good. I know. <laughs> Pepper. Always be careful with white pepper. It's a lot more, uh, for lack of a better word, peppery or spicy heated than black pepper is. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's going to spit. Even I'm not used to that all. Bit. We've got two dimensions of pepper in there. Like I said, hey, that's why you're the chef. You're teaching me. <laughs> a little bit of, because we're just going to dry rub these guys. Just, just enough. Well, I think I had an advanced friend who's a chef help me out. I'm learning as I go, and I'm having fun doing this. <clears throat> Dry rub these guys. In you go, Mike. Nice. And wow. Number two. And now that we're cooking Thumper, all you Disney fans, next time we'll get some venison and cook Bambi. I'm just kidding. That was... 